Welcome to the Marriage Cafe, where marriages come alive through the Word of God. With your host, Bishop William Pittman and Prophetess Loretta Pittman. Now get yourself a cup of something special and enjoy your time in the Marriage Cafe. Hello, we are here. Hey, everybody. <laughs> we are here. We are live. All yes, right. We are live. Yes, 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 yes. God is amazing. God is good. Hello, hello, hello out there. We are here. Are you here? Pardon me. Is he okay, what's going on? What, what are we doing? Yeah. What are we doing? Huh? What are we doing? What is going on? What is going on? I did all that. <laughs> did that no, you too. didn't. You did not. <laughs> Hallelujah. Behind okay. the scenes, what is going everybody. on? What, what, what is going oh, on? All right. Okay. Make sure you turn that it. down, honey. Um, anywho, we are here. We are live. We are live. God is good. And we are glad to be here with you guys tonight. How have you got? Anyway, how was your week, honey? Oh, it was good. How not was your week? At all. Good not week. At all. Good week. All right, all right. So happy to be on here tonight, live with y'all. Yes. Yes. Are you? Yes. 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 You are happy. Okay. All right. Well, I am too. Anyway, I had a really good week. Um, God is amazing. You know, as always. You know, had a lovely um Sunday thus far. You know, the Word of God was on point this morning, and had some nice dialogue with my young folks this morning. My young grown ups. Yes. Had some wonderful dialogue with them. Uh, God is just absolutely good. And uh, I love talking to uh, my young adults on Sunday. Um, it is so much fun to talk to them. They have such wisdom, the wisdom that God has given them. And uh, <laughs> we laugh a lot, right? Do yeah. we not? Yeah, I mean, you fun. just sit here quiet. Are no, you okay? okay. <laughs> we just laugh a lot and everything. Yeah. And um, they are just so funny. So, but anyway, I enjoyed that um, with them this morning. Um, and, you know, God is just, you know, like I said, he's good all the time. And it's been a, a blessed week this week. We got a lot of things, you know, going on, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Right? God is good all the time. All the time. He really God is. is. He really is. He's absolutely amazing in our lives. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's amazing in your life. And hopefully you guys out there had a blessed week. Um, you know, every day is blessed. Every day that God give us is a blessed day. It really, really every is. We just is need to look blessing. at it as such, right? Yeah, that's it. It's how we look at things. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's how we how see we it. Things, yeah. mm -hmm, how we see it. You know, mm -hmm. some people don't see every day as blessed or they're not grateful for the day. You know, I'm grateful for the day. How about you? I'm grateful. You yeah, grateful? When God wake you up. You got to be grateful. Yes. And thankful. Yes, you do. Because what the old folks would always say, somebody didn't wake up this morning. Yes, him and the old folks. Lord yeah, Jesus. but you're, you're here. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. We woke up this morning. Yeah. And we are here. God is absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, um, baby, about ready? Uh, I'm ready. You ready? I'm looking at this camera. I'm like, do we need to do anything with the camera? Or, do we, or, we, or it's fine. I think it's okay. Yeah, the camera. It 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 do. It do. It do. It do. It do. It do. Okay. All right. All righty. Well, well, let's go. Welcome, welcome to, to the, the Marriage Cafe, Cafe where, where marriages, marriages come, come alive through the Word of God. God. I'm Prophet Loretta Pittman. I'm Bishop William Pittman. And we got a great topic for you guys tonight. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right now. All right. Yes. Let's go. Dear Lord, we're so thankful and so grateful for another opportunity to come live tonight. Yes. Just thank you, Lord, and thank you for you being in our lives, and thank you for all the listeners tonight. Yes. Lord, we pray that you just use us tonight and give us a rhema word from you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Give the praise, honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name. Jesus' we pray. name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. We are podcasting, so if we don't shout you out. That's the reason why. I will send a little text while I'm sitting here if we need to, but... um. All in all, we are here. We are here. And we we are, here. are here. So tonight, if you tuned in tonight, we're talking about the marriage. Marriage, the union between a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to start it out here. I don't know. It's just something that uh, I believe uh, 
I just I was looking at this book I had found, so I just started reading it, and it talks about the different types of marriage, uh, like by Roman Catholic Jewish people and all this. And I just started reading the book, so I wanted to see how like traditional marriages, you know, are. And if you, you know, I think we need to take the time sometime to see how other religions or other people, what they do when they get married and all that type of stuff. Marriage is just not, you know, uh, Christian or, you know, uh, being like uh, just in the United States where we talk about marriage and stuff like that. But you got to look at the different religions and all that, because sometimes if you look at uh, other people, uh, the religions or whatever it may be, you know, do you ever think about when you look at that, what is their divorce rate? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What do they do to keep their marriages together? You ever think about that? Mm. You know, what what is other people doing? Do they they divorce more than Christians or, you know, how do they live their life? And then I thought about it in the beginning. Right. First marriage was really Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. How did they feel about marriage? Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And God put both of them together. We saw that they fell and everything. But how was their marriage in the beginning when they first met? Right. Exactly. You know, that we wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Was their marriage wonderful? They didn't have to work. They wasn't sick right. in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So how was their marriage? Was it happy? Right. Did Adam always stay out of the house? Okay. Or what did he do? Right. And Eve just stay in the garden and not right. work. Exactly. So we don't know because we wasn't there. Right. But I'm pretty sure in the beginning, they didn't get sick. Right. And so when Satan mm -hmm. came in, that's when they fell. So anyway, I wanted to start off with marriage. As far as marriage, like as far as we know of, the first marriage was in 2350 BC. Oh, okay. 2350 BC. All right. And that, that was, was the first marriage. Adam, Adam no, no, Adam. that was in Macedonia. Macedonia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then after that, it spread it. It went to uh, the Hebrews, the Greek, and the Romans hmm. back and all that. All right. So the reason I'm talking about this tonight, because it, it bothered me how, like, the foundation or the standard of marriage, marriage is like being watered down. Right. You mm -hmm. know, we have, like, if nobody hears from, like, us, mm -hmm. like, if our children don't, if we didn't set a standard and teach our children, our grown kids, then when they have children, it's gonna, it's not gonna be any standard there. Right, God's standard. Right, right. It's no standard. Right, exactly. So you know what I'm saying? Well, we, you know, we get yeah. our standards from God. Yes, exactly. How He want us to. Right, you know, the Word of God. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's good because wait a minute, I got go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. That's good because there's all kind of marriages today, mm -hmm. and marriages that are not written in the Word of God. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you know. They're watering down the way marriage is and the relationship in marriage and mm -hmm. the walls of marriage as a whole. So it's being so watered down and they're trying to make man and man and woman and woman something normal and natural. And it's not natural. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's not normal. It's not it's not the way God intended things to be or it would not be a multiplication uh, in the earth. So, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So I want to talk about that. Yeah. So marriage. Is this the the acceptable unit uh, union of a man and a woman, a husband and a wife relationship? And that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. It was a man and a woman. Now, I ain't talking about nobody else. I'm just saying setting the standard tonight. So when you came, uh, the order of marriage is between a man and a woman. So you know, and then back in in uh, the Bible days, they. Uh, when they looked at marriage, man wanted a companionship. And mm -hmm. that's what God said. Man shouldn't be alone. So he made man a helpmate. Mm -hmm. So it's all in the scripture. So tonight, I believe I'm going to get a little bit off of what I wanted to, um, what I wrote down tonight. But to me, it's just marriage. This is what bothered me today. Um, to see how marriage is going. And like you said, you know, and I think we kind of getting off track with marriage. Yeah. And I was telling my wife earlier, it's like, if you look at it, like we wasn't born like 100 years ago mm -hmm. or 200 years ago. So what man is doing, I don't want to get ahead about myself, but I am. What man is doing, they trying to betray like this homosexual spirit and all these things on TV and all over now. And they saying it's OK, it's OK. But did you ever sit back and think about 
think about it. You wasn't here 200 years ago. So whatever they did 200 years ago, it started to change. Right. It's changing. So whatever they did back then, tradition and all that, it, everything is changing now. Mm -hmm. So now you got and this. Gener yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you got this generation thinking it's OK for a man and a man to be together and a woman and a woman. Right. But I'm here to tell you back in the Bible days, you got stoned for that. Mm hmm. You know, because they knew it wasn't of God. Yes. But not bashing anybody. I'm just painting a picture of when somebody know that you're going the wrong way. It's a man and a woman job, a man and a woman of God's job to let you know that you you're going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So even if I was going the wrong way, if you're a man and a woman of God and you see me going the wrong way, I'm supposed to warn you let you know but it's still your choice to yes. do whatever you want to do with this life mm -hmm. you know your life yes so anyway to set the standard and i look at my children mm -hmm. and they're an example of me they're a reflection of me and their mom and when you look at them what we taught them over the years they should have kept some of it that's right you know they's not throwing everything out they yes. got some, they have some kind of standard, what they say back in there, some kind of get up about themselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're not out there running around trying to steal, kill or whatever the devil wants you to do because they have, they was brought up. Yes. And, you know, under the standard of God yes. and the Bible. That's yes. what we read. That's what we live by. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you want to go? You want to say something? Uh, I can read. You want me to read this? Yeah. You can read All that. right. Let's go ahead. Instead of me just talking. <laughs> All right, so it says Colossians 13, 18 through 19, and it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting for those who belong to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. And then it says, and then I say, in other words, marriage is a gift from God, and we ought to treat it as such. God is so good that to keep his children from being in sin and to teach his children how to love, he made marriage. Don't ever look at your marriage as just an agreement on a piece of paper. Think of your spouse and family as a gift because that's what it is. It is okay, a marriage gift. is a gift. That's in my book, A Cup of Daily Wisdom for Your Marriage, if you want to know. So marriage is a gift from yes, God. Yes, it's a gift from God. So if you think about it, if you really love God and this gift that God is giving you when God you know, give you a mate or whatever, you got to realize that's a gift. When yes. it says when you find a woman, you find, you know, yeah. when you find a wife, you find a good thing and you and obtain, obtain favor, favor yeah. from the Lord. Man. Yeah, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain the favor of the Lord. Yes. Okay. So now, get back on here. So now, what I want to say tonight, marriage was established between a man and a woman, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a path, it's a pattern of this. So now, society want to say, now, Oh, it's okay. You can change some things, you know, mm -hmm. over the years. They try to water it down, right. keep watering it down. Yeah. So if you keep watering the thing down and, and what bothered me, you keep seeing like on TV now, you see men holding hands, kissing, and kissing and and women doing all stuff, this stuff. God. You know, they wasn't doing, let's think about it. Mm. 10 years ago, they wasn't doing this. No, they, they wasn't, wasn't showing all this stuff Promoting all this in movies and all this kind of stuff. Yes. So what I was saying, if you think about it, if right now, if a lot of us kind of like uh let's go ahead 20 mm -hmm. 30 years from now okay and the only thing you look at tv and you see all this going on with two men and women doing all this stuff and all the violence and all this and we had to look at it 20 30 years from now and this is all you see that's what you're going to be programmed with yes then yes. you know marriage you know some of the stuff going to be done away with yes if you don't speak up for it yeah if you don't, don't stand up for teach it. it from the yeah, word if you don't it, teach we don't it what you going to think yeah. you're going to come out thinking that okay it's all it's all right it's a normal thing it's mm -hmm. all right for two men to be together right it's all right for two women to be mm -hmm. together why because all these years passed on and this is what they passed on yeah. to you and guys. they're trying to make that stuff pop yeah they really are and they're trying to really really make the walls of the union of marriage they're trying to taint it with these images of two men, two women, and then, you know, trying to make it like that's normal. And yeah. people born now in this generation, years later, will think that that's the way to go. That's how marriage should look. It should look like that. Well, you know, and then they say, well, you can't help who you love. You know, well, though a lot of things are, are, are decisions that we make. You know, nothing is just thrown upon you. 
you know, that's a decision that a person makes when they decide that they want to be with the same sex. But the Bible clearly tells us that that is an abomination. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. And we have to teach the word from what the word says. Okay. Now I wanted my wife to read this in mm -hmm. this text here. All right. I want you to read this in this text. Okay. And, and this is going to set the groundwork for us tonight. All right. So it says a, it says marriage in ancient Israel. It says marriage in ancient Israel was decidedly um, endogamous. Hebrews were enjoined to marry only their own kind, and heavy pressures enforced this standard. The marriage estate operated as a sanctification affecting tribe and nation. For them, marriage was seen not only as the one flesh relationship, but also as a means of survival for their system. It involved a betrothal uh, ring, a mobar payment by the groom to the bride's father, as well as a dowry, a religious blessing, a procession to the couple's rent, and often a week's celebration of eating and drinking. Yeah, you, but you see how they right. So there was a they, lot of things given to the parents mm -hmm. as well as the couple. Yes, when it came to getting married, well, people but don't you, think they got to give anything to the parents. But you days. see how it says <laughs> in here: it says the it was enforced. The yeah, standard right. was the standard of marriage was enforced. Yes. You just didn't do what you want to do or come up with your own thing. They had stuff put in place. Right, and and what it is, this this was their standard back then, and this this is what they they believed. And this is what they had in place. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying now, we looked at here. This is what I wrote down. You know, couples back in the day, after Isaac uh, chose Rebecca in the book, you know, in Genesis uh, in 24, um, there was a standard put in place. And after that, from the northern North America, this is where it came from. North America started this couples living together without marriage. Mm. So what well, tonight I, I went through, I took my time and went through all this today. And I have a lot of stuff in here, but it just shows how as the years go on and on, they start to it's starting to be watered down and people trying to get away from what God has put in place. Mm -hmm. And it shows how couples was living together without marriage, being married. And mm -hmm. it started in in northern in north northern uh, North America. OK. And they even called some they said so-called trial marriage. Mm. Like when you was young, they tried a marriage first. You know, all this stuff is not of God. Right. Then they had a two-step marriage. Mm. Then they had an open marriage. Mm. They had a, a a swap marriage, homosexual reunion. Wow. They started all this in Northern America. Northern America. <laughs> wow. North America. Okay. And then they had, they said, uh, uh, what is it? A temp, a temper, uh, a temperate uh, partner. Like temporary temporary part. Okay. You you do it when you feel like it. Right. You know what I'm so, saying? Come so, and go. So, okay. so these, this is nothing new. The Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes says it's nothing new, new under, under the, the sun. sun. That's right. So this is stuff that they was doing back in that's something that we kind of talked in 1966. They yeah. started doing this. Yeah, that's something we talked about that a little bit earlier with our young folks about um, you know, I think it was my daughter who brought it up about. Uh, being in a marriage, but what if they did marriage licenses the way they do driver's licenses, mm -hmm. where you you know have to renew it every year, mm -hmm. you know, because you have to. Some people renew theirs every year, some people renew theirs every two years. So what do you I mean? What 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 would it be like if we had to renew our uh, marriage licenses every year? I mean, would we still get married? Would we still want to be with that same person? You know, all of that we talked about today. Would you want to still be married to the person you married to? Mm -hmm. um, and what would the world even be like if something like that was like to happen or had, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or, or something, you know, it's just crazy. But this, or, you know, go ahead. Let's talk about the same thing. <laughs> Let me do it. In yeah. 1966, a young couple would enter a first step of marriage mm -hmm. with minimum commitment mm -hmm. and no pledge but would uh, this relationship at a later time if they plan to be licensed to bear children. Right. So really they got in a relationship with without even being married. Right. They wanted to try out marriage. Mm -hmm. Where in scripture it says 
get a woman and try her out and then move on. Let's right. be real now. Mm -hmm. A lot of us do it. We move in, what they call it, shacking. Yes. You're not married. But God don't want you to do that. Mm -hmm. See, it says the young, yes. young couples, even back in 1966, mm -hmm. young couples would enter a first step of marriage with minimum commitment. Mm -hmm. No pledge. They don't want to. They just want what they want. See what yeah. I'm saying? And some of us today think what we doing, you know, is something different. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to get married. I don't have to live like this. But you're living in sin. Mm -hmm. He's telling you that. God don't want you to do that. Yes. And he says the relationship, you know, they they don't. Uh, it says now they say is after they've been in a relationship like this, they say later on they could say, OK, let's get married now mm -hmm. to bear children. Right. You know what I'm saying? But God wants us to do that in the beginning. He wants you to be with one spouse, one person. That's what, yeah, that's you know what, what Jesus saying? came to put in place. Yes, definitely. Because, you and know, that's what he did in the garden with Adam yeah. and Eve. You know, that was supposed to be a forever thing that, you know, till death do you part. And that's basically what the Bible says. You know, do the Bible have to say till death do you part? Uh, no, but they kind of. Yeah, but they added that in, they right? That in but it, but it is part. supposed to be a situation in that realm because God says, you know, that when it, the marriage looks like the same relationship that he got with us, mm -hmm. he's married to us. That's Even right. after death, he's still married to us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He said he's with us, whether we here, whether we there with him or whether we even inhale, you know, mm -hmm. he's with us. So it's well, supposed to look like that. That's the mm -hmm. that's how marriage supposed to look like, the relationship between God and, and Israel or or God in us, in other words. You so know? I'm going to answer that because yeah. I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. The wedding, one woman of one man mm -hmm. has no end. All right. But then there you go. Has so no that's end. That's your part then. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. And to nobody no not married in heaven. So, yeah. Yes. To no end. All when it right. Says here, the regulations of marriage. For, for them, marriage remains a holy estate mm -hmm. blessed by God. All right. See, we can't take God out of marriage. It's blessed by God. Right. Now, if you already, if you out of order mm -hmm. and they say you're going against God said marriage is a man and a woman. And then some people are running around talking about, you know, if you in sin and you do an abomination of it. And then you talk about God loves me. God do love you. Yes. But you still out of order. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not a man and a woman in marriage. You out of order. Right. With God. Yes, you are. And some people don't want to hear that. No, they don't. They don't so, want to hear that. It hurts their feelings. Yeah. They say, oh, you don't like you uh, yeah, us. Yeah, you, you, you're a bashing the LGBTQ community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying things against us, and we're not. We're telling you what the word of God says, mm -hmm. because this is the marriage cafe, you know, where we give you the word, the marriage. Uh, you know, we talk to you about marriage through the word of God. So, that's what we're giving you right now. And like I said, those marriages, they try to make them look like they are normal. Mm -hmm. And like you said, you know, it is, you know, important for our legacy that we're leaving. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to marriage um, uh, for our children, you know, that our children will talk to their children, you know, you know. So because the Bible tells you to leave, you know what I'm saying? You know leave a blessing in other words for your children and your children's children you know a good man leaves you know something behind mm -hmm. so um you know we need to make sure that the walls of marriage within our family you know continues on you know what mm -hmm. i mean because like you said we could get 20 years down the road and folks will be like you know looking at these other marriages on the tv man and man woman and woman and think that that's normal Let's just go with that because that's what we're seeing that marriage is. But no, marriage is between a man and a woman. And it's supposed to be like the relationship we got with our father, our heavenly father. You know, I keep, I see it. The word of God cuts like a two-edged sword. Yes, it piercing does. Piercing to the marrow, yeah, it's right? it's telling you the truth. That's so what it, what so this doing. is what we're doing tonight. The mm -hmm. Roman Catholics, Christian says this marriage is confirmed on one another by baptism what they used to do baptize the woman mm -hmm. and baptize the man and then get married in the presence of witnesses yes they did it you know what i'm saying mm, what powerful. i'm what i'm trying to get i'm help me holy spirit help i'm trying spirit. to get somewhere help tonight. Him, Lord. look as we lay this foundation <laughs> tonight because i want to open your eyes the main thing about the marriage cafe and about our ministry mm -hmm. is to open your eyes to something different 
mm-hmm. more than what you're getting, you know, or even just be a blessing to us, you know. Mm-hmm. So marriage, marriage is between a man and a woman. It says this marriage in ancient Israel, Hebrews were enjoy, uh, enjoined to marriage only their own kind. And what it says here, and heavy pressure enforced on this standard. They, that means back in those days, they didn't play games with marriage. Mm-hmm. When you got married, they, it was serious. You got it, married to your own kind. And your Come own on now, kind. put it out Hold there. On. It Tell says me. what it says. Come on now, we playing with the word. Yeah, yeah. So Come their on. own kind. So they married that's their own they, kind. That's what they did so, back then. So both husbands and wives yes. are considered joint heirs yes. of the grace of life. Mm-hmm. One flesh, bond of marriage, what mm-hmm. God has joined together, let us not put us under right so so a lot of those things have changed as yeah. well you know but boy, like you said they own kind they married their own kind and we know things changed over the yes, years definitely. it's a new generation now. yes some things are going to change in life we're yes. not saying that yes. but your structure your foundation and what you learn and what the word the bible gives us should be the same yeah it's that standard that meaning this is what man we go and by. woman and you know in holy matrimony to bring about a family yeah and then back in the uh with the jews and stuff like that they all community when, yes. uh, when a husband and wife got together that whole community backed you mm-hmm. and they talks about it how that community if you got in if y'all had a fight or something like that or conflict y'all was made to work it out mm-hmm. it wasn't no you just gonna get ma- uh get a divorce mm-hmm. you could get a divorce but they was like Hey, we supporting y'all. Yes. You know, you didn't slept with this woman and she slept with you. Y'all won. It seemed like the families back then were more supportive. Yeah. Of the exactly. marriage. And they would be there for the couple when they did get married. You know what I'm saying? Which is what mm-hmm. we try to do, you know, for couples that we know also for our family. We try to be there for them. So if they need counsel or they need to talk about something or they're going through something, we could catch it before that even gets to that point. You know, these mm-hmm. days you don't have a lot of uh, family, you know, that's rallying around a couple that's married to help them because, you know. Yeah, because back in the back in the Bible days, they mm-hmm. seen the couples as young couples mm-hmm. and they see them as growing together in marriage. Yes. And, and it's a process. This yes. is what they say. Mm-hmm. And they know marriage is a process. Yes. And you got to grow. You grow into this you relationship. Grow. You yes. grow. Mm-hmm. So you don't start off in the in the marriage uh, knowing everything. Knowing everything. You, you really gotta don't. get to know you them. Gotta so gotta it's a process. Know. Right. You get to know each other. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why even in the word, um, some of the men would take off, mm-hmm. would have time that whole year, that whole full year off so that they could get to know their spouse. Yeah. You know, even though I think that, you know, a lot of people are getting to know each other, you know, before they get married. Some people are taking years to know each other before they get married. So but back then, you know, they would, you know, and actually back then too, they would choose your mate for you. You know, in some instances, in some families, it just depends. You know, they would choose your mate and then you would uh, definitely have to get to know them if that person was chosen mm-hmm. for you because you wouldn't know that person. You know, that person was just chosen. They just thought that person would be a good person for you. So, you know, back in the biblical day, they would take a year off so that mm-hmm. that person could know that spouse. But they were taken care of by the family, like the family would come in and support them and help them. But that's not happening these days. Mm-hmm. You know. I want you to hear this now. Mm-hmm. Like over the years, y'all say this is a new generation and all this stuff. It says the issues in marriage. This was back then. The issues in marriage, the changing roles of of the woman and the man. The roles are changing, but they change gradually. Mm-hmm. See how things that happen gradually. Mm-hmm. It says the problems that stand out. This is what they had problems with back in the days. The fear of abandonment. Mm-hmm. Don't we do that same thing this day in these these times mm-hmm. discipline of children they didn't like to discipline their children mm-hmm. uh sexual disappointment mm. spending of money wow Re- relationship it was bad relationship with in-laws mm-hmm. the lack of consideration wow and then violence that's a lot of stuff happening like that today infidelity mm-hmm all that so nothing's changed everybody keeps saying oh this is a new generation right We're doing things differently doing they things had different. the same problems back back then, then. Mm. it's no different so the same is it's like we're not learning from everybody you know as kids get older they'd be like you know i'm gonna do things my way yes yeah, i want to do this yeah school. yeah this is new this school is i want to do school. things my way yeah and i'm here if you just sit down and read a lot of this stuff 
they went through back then. So that t- that tells me you really haven't learned anything over the years. Yes. And it says research, mm-hmm. research study, the couples together that uh, they most couples stayed together because they had a mutual fulfillment, fulfillment, fullness. I mean, fulfillment of needs. They right. learned how to um, fulfill each other's needs. Right. Mm-hmm. To fulfill each other's needs. Yes. And they said that was the key back then. Mm hmm. You know, so all these things they did, but the key that kept people together was the fulfilling of each other's need. They mm-hmm. learn how to get, a, get, get right. along. Right, exactly. How to get along, how to get along, to, to get along. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, look, I hope I'm helping somebody tonight. Because if they did it back then, it says researchers studied this. Mm-hmm. They had these problems back in the days. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The fear of abandonment, discipline of the children. They didn't want to discipline their children. Right. Some of them did. Yeah. Sexual disappointment. How many people we hear all the time yep. that say, oh, man, you know, my, my sexual them. needs are not being met. Yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or spending of money. Somebody yeah. spending too much money in the right, relationship. Right, right. So in other words, those are, all, those are always, those always have been issues. Right. And they will continue to be issues. Exactly. That's basically what you're saying there. Exactly. Because those are the things that you have to work out with, with each other because everybody's coming sometimes from a different culture, depending on who you're marrying. Mm-hmm. And they're coming from different ways of learning, you know, different uh, backgrounds of growing up, you know. So, yeah. So you always want to have those particular issues in a marriage when people think sometimes that, oh, when we get to, you, when you get together with somebody, you ain't supposed to have no problem. Mm-hmm. You will be just perfect. Like everything is just perfect. Or when you get married, it's supposed to be perfect. Oh, we're not supposed to fight about the children. We're not supposed to fight about the sex. We're not supposed to fight about the money. Well, these things happen. It doesn't mean that you, uh, you know, you're doing something wrong. It just means that some things need to be corrected. Like you need to get on one accord with each other with whatever that issue is at that particular moment in your marriage or in your relationship. Right? Yeah. So then it brings us to the future of marriage. Mm -hmm. It says, you know, back in the day, uh, and I believe it's coming close to our time where it says that the economic situation that now allows both uh, the man and the woman to achieve financial independence. Mm-hmm. So when you start, uh, when people start to have financial independence, some people get prideful. Yes. Some people don't, oh, hey, yes. this is my money or whatever. Yeah, it may I be. did so, this. Yeah, I got yeah. myself here. You didn't help. They didn't look at the person that was there with them the whole time when they didn't have nothing. So the picture I'm trying so, to yeah. paint to you tonight is when you have all this going on generation after generation, uh, People are starting to get more independent. So now uh, five things I wrote down that was happening back then. One, a lot of started uh, mixed marriages start to happen. Mm-hmm. Mixed marriages. So what 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 I'm showing you, these five things are taken away from the real standard of marriage. Okay. So one was mixed. A lot of people mixed marriages to uh, a lot of single people getting divorced, single parents. Uh, three, uh, a lot of some people didn't want to have children. Mm-hmm. And then the homosexual reunion, mm. and then families got smaller. Mm. So all this is wow. taken, taken, you know, from the traditional marriage or what I'm saying. This is how the enemy gets in, and he started to make get, the changes from what God originated the marriage to look like and be. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. all this stuff is going on, mm-hmm. and what it is is taking away the focus of what marriage or what family or what God intended it for the beat. That sounds like that's a trap from the enemy. Right, exactly. So if we can get all these people mm-hmm. to say, okay, I'm gay. Right. Or I'm, you yep. know, I'm splitting up. I'm leaving my house. Mm-hmm. Look at all this. All yep. this is, all these, these five things that happen, like a lot of mixed relationships back in the day, they didn't stay together because mm-hmm. there was so much pressure on a mixed marriage. Mm-hmm. Now it's different. Yes. So. That's so good because, not to cut you off, go but ahead. that's so good because, you know, me and you've been watching some movies here lately and in these movies it's always something with affairs as well they're trying to make that look like that's natural and normal mm-hmm. and there's a lot of movies coming out uh showing you know uh, the husband you know having an affair with the with the babysitter or having an affair with the neighbor or somebody and something and they're trying to make like i said all these things look normal yes like this is what's supposed to happen and this is how this you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of that actually going on. And that wasn't their guy's original plan. That was mm-hmm. not his real, his original plan and how 
the union of marriage is supposed to be and what it should look like. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this, <laughs> I, no, I wrote this down. I was just reading okay. it. The Jewish, the Jewish marriage ceremony, the marriage created the basic, the basic society, the unit, unit, unit of family, mm -hmm. the community, the society, because this, the, um, all this, they brought together. It's like, it's a celebration. It's a when somebody got married, it was a real celebration and they was there for you. They let you know that you had backing. People was supporting you. Like nowadays, people want to run off and get married or they don't want their family there. Yeah, all they don't want family stuff. to even know they got married. Yeah. Let alone be there. So it's a lot of this going on. But, but that's a lot to me. That has a lot to do with the enemy. Yes. The enemy is putting that thought in a person's head that you don't need your family. I'm, you only need me. You know, like you said, that's that that part where you are pulled away from your family to get into a reunion with someone that's probably abusive and all those things, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So I wrote this down. This is what they had in the book, mm -hmm. because the sex drive. Listen, now, once you've been married and all that, now you separated. The enemy is getting you to uh, fall in the sin. He says, because once you had sex, because the sex drive is such a powerful force in human life. It must be contained within the bonds of marriage. That's right. Because that's what he made it for. He didn't make yeah. it for a boyfriend and girlfriend. He made mm -hmm. the sex for the husband and the wife. But the boyfriend and the girlfriend is out there having it. And then they're having babies and families and all of that stuff. And everything mm -hmm. is out of wedlock. Everything is yes. just crazy right now So with that going on. So, so this is the enemy getting in. Mm -hmm. And he's got a foothold into people's relationships so he he'll tell you oh yeah it's all right for you to do this like, yes it's all right for you to marry a man mm -hmm. it's all right for you to be with you know a woman it's all right for you to get a divorce mm. it all it's all right for you to sleep through it you know get a you know more than one a open marriage they mm, call it Lord you Jesus. know it's all right to do these things oh yeah swingers and yeah, all that yeah. crazy stuff if he can get in and then you know how the enemy comes you know, let's just try, babe. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not fulfilling my needs. Right. Let's just, can we have somebody else come in to mm -hmm. our marriage? Yeah. The devil oh, is Oh, yeah, alive. you got a lot of that going on, and they're trying to make that normal, too. Yeah. Threesomes and all this kind of stuff. You add mm -hmm. an extra person, and it's just crazy. Let me tell you, some people say they had threesome and all that kind of stuff and did all that. Thank God I was never put into that. But yes. the reason I bring that up, the threesome and all that, if you're a woman, think about it. This is this is this is what bothers me. If you're a woman and you really care about yourself mm -hmm. and you've been keeping yourself, you're a virgin. Let's say you're a virgin and you keep you've been keeping yourself all these years, and then all of a sudden, you know, out of the blue, you just want to sleep with all these men. You didn't think about yourself. Isn't that like, you know, sex or a relationship that's supposed to be intimate? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm yes. saying? You mm -hmm. share a woman sharing her first experience. Or, you know, just sharing her body. Why would you want to share your body with all these men? Mm. You know, because yeah. a woman, you know, you're going inside mm -hmm. and you want all these men into your body. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't, that's why God yeah, wanted a lot it of that. together. That's why you, you know wanted that, that first that's experience really should be with, with your, your husband. husband. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying tonight. But he said that sex drive. Mm -hmm. Some men, if you, you know, you've been out there creeping and doing all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you want to. A lot of them try to spread themselves all over the place. Yeah. But but it's between it's supposed to be between you and your wife. Yes. Now definitely, definitely. So I'm hoping I'm laying this. I want to lay lay this foundation uh for you guys tonight. So it's um let me give you this next one here. It says the Jewish law and tradition, the Jew Jewish law and tradition, the government, they govern the the state of marriage. Mm -hmm. Marriage can be entered into only if both partners are adults. Couldn't get married being young and being all a that. Kid and all so that. Mm -hmm. what tonight I went over different religions from the Roman Catholic, the Jewish, and, and Christianity. So marriage is marriage can be entered in only if both parties are adults. A civil ceremony. So marriage, you know, they came together, the family came together. Uh, and then you like enjoyed one another. And like you said, they stayed together. They went in somewhere for a year and confirmate the marriage and did all these things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then it was, they said it was self-contained. The Jewish community kind of kept the marriage, kept an eye on you. 
Okay. It's like you just didn't go out and do anything. Right. They made sure if somebody could help you, they helped you. It, in this generation here, it's like when they get married, everybody just separate. Right. You know, the families really don't see each other right. or some stuff like mm -hmm. that. But back then, what I'm saying, the foundation was so strong because they wanted you to make it. Yes. Because they wanted to see family. They wanted you to be successful yeah, in marriage. Mm -hmm. in marriage. They wanted you to have children. They yes. wanted you not to be struggling. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you had a community around you or, you know, a church or whatever it may be. They're supposed to be there for you. Yeah. If you're having a problem. That's right. If you need some help. Yeah. Somebody in that church may have a job for you. Somebody in that church may have something that you need. Mm -hmm. And what I'm what I'm saying tonight, we got to get back to the fundamentals, the to the standard of what God has given us, the yes. groundwork, the, the law that God has put in place for marriage. Mm -hmm. And we've got to come on one accord. You can't, if you keep watering it down or thinking it's okay or just sitting back and say, you know what? We don't need to do that. We don't need to say, thing, say anything about that. Let them do what they do. No. I'll, with the marriage cafe, God put it in place for us to tell you the truth and live it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The marriage cafe is where marriages came alive through the word of God. Yes. It's God that we letting people know that God keeps your marriage together. Yes. God is supposed to be first in your marriage. That's right. God is supposed to be first in your life. Yes. He so should. really the, the whole thing of it is, I just wanted you to see tonight. But if you look over the years, how this, they Our had the same problem yeah. and now marriage is being water, watered water down. down yeah. Like it's okay for mm -hmm. two men to get married. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's okay for two women to be married. No, it's not. No, it's not. And and then the, the whole thing, marriage, when you a man and a wife get married, you suppose that this man is supposed to have some kind of standard. Yes. A man is a man. He's supposed to be there for his wife, provide her, be there for his children, be mm -hmm. able to take care of his family. Yeah, because even that changed. And even that has been watered down. Because mm -hmm. now you got both uh the spouse, both spouses working. They both are tired and exhausted. They come home. You know what I'm saying? They have to deal with their children if they have a sitter or whatever and those kind of things. And so that's been tampered with a lot of things because it's not traditional no more where the husband went out to work and the wife was at home uh, taking care of the home and being ready to take care of her husband when he comes in, you know, and then if they have children taking care of the children, you know. So, yeah, a lot of stuff has been watered down. So now we had some questions that uh, I wanted uh, that you wanted to put out there. What was they talking about early? Now? Okay, the, well, the we talked about that. Things. Talked about how when a husband wants a woman, you know, when a man wants a woman, the man should be ready to take care of that woman. Mm -hmm. We talked about that earlier about how you know even with the Muslims, I think, right? Mm -hmm. They, you know, they want more than one wife then they have to have enough money to take care of that extra woman, mm. you know? Yep. So why is it not look the same as if, okay, if the man is going along and he's single and the man wants to be married, the Bible says that he that findeth the, the wife finds a good thing and obtains the favor. So when he goes to find that wife, shouldn't that man be equipped to take care of that wife? That was like one of the things that we talked about because, it's so many things going on when it comes to that. Like, you know, the wife is looked at like she's like not there to help the husband. She's looked at like she's not important and those kind of things. Or it's looked at as, oh, you need to go out there and you need to bring in some income as well, which is nothing wrong with a woman bringing in some income. But if the man goes out there and finds this woman and this woman is a certain way mm -hmm. and she doesn't have all these things, then that man need to have all these things to, in order to receive this woman in order to take the hand of this woman even the bible right we just read talked about the things that the husband had to do in order to receive the wife from the mm -hmm. from the family yep. right they had to he had to bless the family he had to you know go to the mom and the dad and those kind of things and and ask the woman hand in marriage if it wasn't an arranged marriage you know mm -hmm. and those kind of things but the man even if it was arranged back then that man had to be financially set in order to have this wife and take care of her. Yeah, you just didn't come in with nothing and say, you know, I want to marry your daughter. Yes. You, had to, wait, they you had have a, to show that yeah, you can afford this daughter. Yes. You, you, had, you can afford 
you know, the things that this daughter is going to need, that you will supply her needs, that you need to be there to do that. Mm -hmm. And these days, people are just grabbing up people, sons and daughters and getting married and then don't care about the parents, don't care about what they think, don't care about nothing about the person's family or nothing. And some of them are doing that. And then they're taking people's sons and daughters away uh, and uh, and don't care about these people's families. Like these people don't have no family and didn't have a life before they met them. Yeah, well, you know what? Another thing, too, mm -hmm. because like you were saying, like the wife, a lot of people, what they were saying, like the husband works mm -hmm. most of the time. The wife is home. OK, so now if you have children, it's a different because it's all different phases. Mm -hmm. You got children, you know, somebody got to make this sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Somebody got to be home with the children or both of you working some both of y'all, you know, you got to pay for daycare. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, daycare is so expensive one stay home so if the wife stays home this is a, what a lot of women are saying mm -hmm. because i'm home the husband treats me like oh he's the only one working so i'm home i'm not doing anything mm -hmm. so the women are saying look i'm home taking care of your children mm -hmm. making sure your house is clean yes and doing what you asked me to do yes. during the day while i'm home yes so i'm helping you out and doing all these things now that's the problem if a husband going to work and that woman's home, the kids are not being, uh, they they haven't ate all day. They're not uh, clean mm -hmm. or they're not taking care of what the husband expects of the wife. This is the problem. So once you come in together as a couple, that husband should say, okay, if I'm going to go out and work, I need you to do these things for me. Take care of the house and do all this. And this is the agreement, mm -hmm. right? But some men get in bed with women that don't know how to cook. Right. Don't know how to clean. Right. Well, what we saying tonight, if you would have did your homework, you mm -hmm. would know this woman can't cook. Right. She don't know how to clean. She don't she barely taking care of herself. How can she take care of anybody else? Right. So did you do your homework on this person or you just fell in bed with her because she's pretty? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's right. the problem with a lot of people. Right. Or he's handsome. That's right. But he don't want to keep a job. Yes. And he's not really a real man. Right. He's a mama's boy. Yes, yes. Because so, there's so no ways here. So, yes. so the whole thing is Y'all made that decision to be together. Yeah. So now if you made it a de decision to be together and you didn't do your homework on this person, then you you got to make a decision. Yeah. Either you're going to help this person get together, yes. get his act together, or she get her act together, or that it's not going to work. You know, yeah. you're going to constantly constantly be button heads. That's mm -hmm. what we're saying tonight. Or the agreement. Yeah. The you made an agreement. So mm -hmm. who is not keeping their end of the bargain? Because if there's an agreement made on, you know, uh, that's why we always tell you, you know, dating is a interview before marriage. Because that's mm -hmm. what that should be. Uh, just the interview. Not you sleeping with the person doing all these things. But the interview should be talked about, well, do the person want kids? What, what kind of wife are you looking for? What kind of husband are you looking for? What do you expect the wife or the husband to do? You know, all these things should be asked within the interview. And it's funny that people will take the time, like I said, meet someone and just jump in bed with them when, you know, but they don't take the, but they'll take the time to go to a job interview. And when that job interview interviews you, they're going to ask questions about you joining their company, but you won't take the time to interview this person. You say you want to be married. You want to be married. Not saying you want to be married to this person, but you don't take the time to interview them enough to be able to join them on whatever journey that they may be on. You just kind of want to just sleep with them or you just want to, you know, have a baby by them and you don't even know the ramifications of those things. So, yeah, uh, you should find these things out first. Right. Mm -hmm. But exactly. another thing we talked about today was should a uh, when a person is at home and let's say the parent, they already been married, they don't already made the decision on the husband going out to work and the wife staying home and being home with the children. Uh Shouldn't it be looked at that the wife's job is just that, just as important as the husband that goes out the house to work? Yes. Okay. Of should, course. You guys can chime in on this. Yeah. Should it be looked at that, and should it be just as important that if mm -hmm. the husband go outside that house to work, that he makes a paycheck outside that house, that the wife is home working as well, and that the wife deserves something or the husband, whichever one it is, because it could be some husband. There's some husbands out there that watch the kids and keep the kids too. Shouldn't it be just as up there and important 
as the husband or the wife's job, whichever one it is that goes out. I believe that it should be just as important, but it's been so many years uh, where the wife is looked at as, oh, she's just home with the kids. You know, she's she's just there to watch the kids. You know, I'm the one who works. You know what I mean? The person that goes outside the house makes their what they do more important than the person who is actually there taking care of kids because that person that's out there working cannot be in two places at one time. What if they was a single parent and they had to figure out how were they going to have uh, someone to keep their children and those things? They can't be there taking care of the kids and going out there to work, you know? So you have to... Um, you know, you have to understand that that is just as important. The person that's home doing the doing the housework, cooking the meals, washing the clothes, whether you have children or don't have children, it is just as important. But if you're having children, if you have children, it's even much more. It's just as important, like I said, as that husband going out there to work or that wife, who, depending on who it is every day. Okay. Um, it is says yes, it is. It uh should be uh should be as important. And it really should. It really should. Because sometimes when that person goes out to work, they they look at you like, oh, you're just home, you're just doing this, that, or whatever. And it's just so many, so much of that going on that that person is not looked at like, wow, they did raise my child, my children well, especially once those children are raised up and they go out in the world to be good citizens. And you see the the hard work that was put in by the spouse that stayed back and stayed home to keep to watch them, and they go out in the world. But yet that person will take the the one that's working will take on the credit to say, you know what? Wow, we did a good job. Yeah, mm-hmm. that should be a we thing. It should never be just because that person goes out to work that is just it was there. It was because of them. You know what I'm saying? Because you know how some, some spouse is kid. Oh, it's because of me, because I go out to work and I do this and I do that. But no, it should not be that way. It mm-hmm. should be y'all working together as a team. And yes, wife or husband, whoever's staying home with the kids, what you do is so important. And it is just as important as the person go outside that house. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, because, well, we found out over the years, we know that it's marriage is a commitment. Marriage is a compromise. You know, you got to compromise. When, it, when you come together, you make those decisions. If the husband's going to work, the wife's going to stay home and take care of the kids. That's something you need to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The wife may still want to work. Mm-hmm. So if the wife want to work, then you got to pay for a babysitter. Yes. Everything compromise. is all about. But the problem I see, what my wife is saying, I, I agree with you. Some husbands, some people feel because they work and they bring in the money. Mm-hmm. And you need to do what I say or make sure every all of this is done. You know? No marriage, time, time no marriage is you're not a uh, what they say, you're not a slave in a marriage. That's you know right. what I'm saying? This is a person, everybody is in a relationship for their free will, yes. you know, and then you're supposed to, you know, you come in agreement with yes. what you want to do. But I, I was telling my wife early, the problem is that person that's making the money try to belittle the person that's home. Yes. If you're trying to belitter your wife all the time or whoever's yes. at home, not and cool, them feel not of God. Like, they, not right. Their work, like you said, what they doing is it's not, not important. Not work, and it is important, you know and saying? it is work because, yes, it is. Like I said, you trying to teach these kids, you are trying to make sure they go to school. You going to all the, the the PTA meetings and anything that that need to be done for that child, mm-hmm. and so it needs to be looked at as it's just important. And I believe, okay, so I'm gonna just let all you guys know out there. I really believe that uh, um, the wife or the husband, whoever is the one that's home should be budgeted into the budget, okay? Mm-hmm. They should have an income. If they don't have one coming in, then whatever income that spouse, the one that goes outside the house is bringing in, if that person is not working, they need to be budgeted in with the bills and everything else. They need to have something to be able to take care of themselves. And it's not fair for some of you husbands and some of you wives out there who will take the paycheck and say, oh, this is my money. I made it, this, that, right. Because guess what? That is all out the door when you get married. Because the Bible says you are one. One. So that means whatever money that's coming in that house belongs just as much to that spouse as it does you. So if you are out there doing that, you better stop it right now because the Lord knows and sees all things. You know, and the Lord giveth and the Lord can take it it away as well so you know be kind be nice to your spouse 
and let them know that what they do at home is just as important, especially if they're doing it and doing it well. And they're taking care of you, making sure your meals are done, making sure your clothes are washed, making sure you are ready for your next day at work, you know, as well as taking care of themselves and the children. And they're keeping themselves up. That You know, that's a lot of work when you have to work with kids and keep yourself beautiful and sexy. Mm -hmm. You know what I pick up is this. The bottom line is this. If you got a problem with your husband or your wife, mm -hmm. you know how you can solve these problems? Come it's on, easy tell me. to solve tell the problem. Me. The problem is if, if the wife got a real problem with her husband, he out there making money, switch roles then. Let the husband stay home and the wife go out and work. Well, there's some you roles switch. that switch. No, like no, that. no, no, no. I'm mm -hmm. saying because then you can see how hard it is to take care of children mm -hmm. or to go out and work, you know, 40 hours or whatever it may be. Sometimes That's people right. don't realize how good they got it until you switch roles. Right. You know, sometimes the woman could be at home and she's not grateful that the husband is working. Right. And then sometimes, like you said, the husband is not grateful that the wife is home taking care of the children. Yes. But as you say, you love this person. Mm -hmm. and you love somebody. You're supposed to recognize that what this person is doing and you appreciate them. Yeah. And that's a good thing doing. to switch the roles because yeah. then that way that wife appreciate their husband for going out, but also that husband can appreciate that wife let me tell you, having to deal with his bed behind but if, I remember they did this one time how, you know, when a woman get pregnant, they mm -hmm. said a man don't know how a woman feel. That's so right. what they did, they took this thing and put on the husband yeah. and said, you walk around with this every day yeah. and see how yeah. you feel. Yeah. So when the roles change, the husband was like, oh man, yeah. I see what you're going right. through. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes yeah. people got to see yeah. They think because they go on to work, oh, my work is everything and mm -hmm. all of this. But the wife is home taking care of your children. Yes. So that's that's really a man that's really not watching what's going on. Yes. In his own, he, you know, you're not appreciative, not appreciative of what's going on and in that's your marriage what needs and in your home. It's the appreciation so that's when you, of yeah, it all. That's when you have a problem like that. Yes, yes. But most men, a real man, you go out and work. You're going to, and then, like you said, you come in agreement. Mm -hmm. You know your wife don't have no money because she's not working right now. Mm -hmm. So if she's home taking care of the children, what's wrong with having us her own account? Yes. And y'all do the budget in. together. And she has some money coming through. Mm -hmm. And if she spends her money before her next budgeted money comes through, then that's her problem. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But money. not to come back and be like, oh, I need more money. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You got a budget. Y'all set a budget. And that person is budgeted into you know, the bills and everything else that need to go, go in, you know, that needs to be paid. Mm -hmm. And that wife now has an income because her husband has budgeted. Y'all both decided to make that budget and budgeted that person in and, and or the husband, depending on whoever the one. And now everybody should be happier for it. You know what I mean? It should be a happier mm -hmm. home. But when you got, the, like I said, the one spouse and they're constantly being mean and negative when it comes to the money, that is not mm -hmm. of God. It's not good. And God doesn't want you doing that. That is wrong. You're lording the money over that person. That's not cool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step on some toes right now because some people feel this way. Like mm -hmm. you said, the husband go out and he works. But then the wife is home. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about you, one, that money that, that's coming in is supposed to be budgeted out to pay the rent, mortgage, whatever bills you got to take care of. Then as a couple, you should come in agreement because you won. Mm -hmm. Whatever money's coming in, it's got to be, you know, divided up. The yes. husband should have be on a budget or whatever it yes. may be. He gets so much money. And she if gets he get $100 extra a week, she should get $100. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Y'all on the same page. We yes. save this. We taking care of this. Yep, this. Exactly. But some men, this is the problem I believe you have. Some men work all week and they take that money and say, mm -hmm. it's my money. Mm. they not considered of what the wife is doing at home yep so when the wife don't know anything we've seen over the years oh, how yes. husbands was doctors or lawyers or whatever and they get all this money they move, they leave, when they died or, yeah and the she wife don't know, know anything no nothing don't have no skills don't know nothing don't know where the finances are yes. and left with nothing yeah so really if you're a woman doing that really you need to know how you be how you call yourself one and you don't know what's going on with mm -hmm. the finances or, or how your husband is, if something did happen, mm -hmm. y'all don't have insurance on each other yeah. or something like that. Yeah. You know, you got children. Yeah. Really, the night is opening your eyes. This is just common sense. Yes. As a husband and wife, you have a right to know where those finances are going. Mm -hmm. That man shouldn't be coming home talking about, this is my money. Yep. This is my That's check. That's right. No, you got a wife 
and you got children. That's right. So now that means you got a responsibility yes. to take care of that woman and those children. Yes. And that's so good. Now we're going to talk more about this on next Sunday. We're going to wrap this up right now. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Marriage Cafe. Meet us here again on next Sunday. I think yes. next Sunday is like our last Sunday before we go on our vacation. And um, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we will be talking to you guys again on next Sunday. We're going to talk more about this, especially being more. We're going to talk about being well-rounded, you know, yes. well-rounded. And then where does your happiness lie? Does it lie in your spouse or does it lie in God? We're going to talk about these things on next Sunday. So make sure you join us here because it's time for us women. It's time for just women, period, to get well-rounded and what's going on in their homes. Yes. And what's going on in their marriages. Okay. But anyway. All right. Thank y'all so much. We're going to pray out. Go ahead. Baby. All right. Me. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Lord God, just thanking you so much, Father God, for the Marriage Cafe tonight. And thank you for everyone that is listening to this under the sound of my voice, Father. We just ask yes, you to Lord. bless them, bless them tremendously in their finances, Father God, in their spirit, in their home, in their families, Father God. That the marriage is the marriage bed and the marriage union, Father God, is built on the word of God. It's what God wants us to have. God wants us to have blessed marriages. He wants us to have wonderful marriages. He wants us to have blessed, awesome marriages. So, Lord, I just ask that you will bless each and every marriage under the sound of my voice, Father, that yes, you will Lord. cover yes, everyone's marriage by your blood in the name of Jesus, that we begin to get along with each other and love each other, and that, you know, our children can see that love, Father God, between a man and a woman, Father God. is They're getting so far um, out of the traditional way of what marriage should look like and what marriage should be. And they're trying to make all these other marriages more popular than a marriage between a man and a woman. But Father God, we cover the yes, man and Lord. a woman by your blood, the union of a man and a woman in marriage. We ask you to cover it by your blood, Father God. Keep us, watch over us, and protect us, Father, in the name of Jesus, and protect the sanctity of marriage, Father. We lift it up to you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. Be blessed by you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord, for you, uh, your covering for us for this whole entire week, Father God. We bless you. We give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor, Father God, until we meet again on next Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 We thank y'all so much, so yes. much. And we want to keep bringing the Marriage Cafe to you guys. So as long as you guys keep showing up, we're going to keep being here. We love y'all. We thank you so much. We'll see you guys again on next Sunday. Make sure you definitely join us because then we'll take us some time to enjoy our marriage and some time to uh, have a good time. Okay? God bless. Love y'all. See y'all next week. Bye-bye.